phobias and the rational fear of things that wouldn't bother the majority of people. These could be things like being scared of small spaces or open spaces, even spiders and needles. The problems with phobias is it can consume someone's life and stop them doing things that most people do. For instance, if you have a phobia of flying, the chances are you won't get on a plane, yet millions of people go on holiday by plane every year. Most people avoid what they are scared of, because it will bring them on a panic attack. But the good thing is both phobias and panic attacks can be beaten and you can live without a rational fear. Phobias are very common types of anxiety disorders um, and you know you can be phobic of, of almost anything, you can be phobic of, of animals, of heights, of situations. Um, a quite common phobia is agoraphobia. It comes from the Greek word agora which means um, marketplace. So it's fear of basically being in open spaces, being around people. So fear of basically anything but being by yourself in your own safe space. Now that raises a dilemma. If I only feel safe in my own home then how do I get help? Well, the great thing is, is that your GP there's, I should be able to advise you, there's volunteer organizations that can advise you, websites like this to give you information about what to do. There's a lot of GPs who are able to organize psychologists or counselors to initially come home to you, or that can organize a family or someone you feel safe with to be able to, to escort you to a session. Um, increasingly people are recognizing that if you if you engage with agoraphobia early on you're able to treat it very well in fact even if you've been agoraphobic for years it's something that you absolutely can tackle about well, two years ago we used to be really claustrophobic just the thought of being in small spaces scared me trains planes lifts i couldn't just couldn't i used to get panic attacks and i think that's what scared me the most thinking i'd have a panic attack in the small spaces it's just a vicious cycle. Um, but then after having my CBT, I learned to control the fear. I learned to manage and think to myself that there's actually nothing to be scared of. For example, if someone was claustrophobic, through CBT, the first thing that we would do is look at what thoughts are, 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 are feeding that phobia. Is it a fear of closed spaces? Is it a fear of not getting out into open spaces? Is it a fear of being too close to other people? So you really get down to the, to the nitty gritty of, of why you're claustrophobic, for example. Then you would look at how valid those thoughts are. Will being in a closed space actually kill me? Will it be? What is the worst possible thing that can happen? I'm stuck in an elevator. Most elevators have ventilation, I think it's, it's a legal requirement. What is the worst possible thing? Can I actually die of being in a small place? Probably not. Will it be uncomfortable? Probably yes. But what can I do to help? Well, there's an abundance of things I can do. I can try and get out, I can distract myself, I can um, speak to other people if they're there, I can, you know, and you, you list the things.